Contemporary science theater always told us that we shouldn't worry so much about science facts, at least not here. This is just a show and we should probably just relax, but I can't. I can't ever relax, even right now, I'm a, I'm a ball of stress and depression, but anyway, I love the show, and I always wondered something about the famous intro. Could you actually fit the MST3K logo on the moon? Mystery Science Theater 3000 is an enormous influence on probably every funny person that you enjoy, and so, as a tribute to the show, I want to figure out whether or not the show's logo could fit on an actual moon. Specifically our moon, because creator Joel Hodgson recently confirmed to me on Twitter something that I never knew. The planet logo is our moon. On the next full moon, go out and look at the night sky. Even though the moon is 35 100 kilometers in diameter at 384,000 kilometers away, it still looks relatively tiny. So what determines whether or not we're gonna be able to write on the moon and see it is human visual acuity. Will the minimum size the letters need to be to see it on the face of the moon actually fit? Let's start with standard visual acuity defined by the common Snellen chart, which was developed all the way back in 1862 by Erman Snellen. Ophthalmologists actually use an updated version of this chart called a Logmar chart, but you're all familiar with this. You've seen it before. Get it. All right, so standard human vision, 2020 vision, is defined by being able to make out one of these letters when it is just five arc minutes high, and an arc minute is 1 60th of one degree. And if these letters are separated by one arc minute or 1 60th of one degree, and you can still make it out five high, you have standard vision. When our moon is full, it takes up anywhere between 25 and 35 arc minutes in our visual field. So this is the total amount of space that we'll roughly have to fit our letters on the moon around 900 square arc minutes. Arc minutes. Now, if we lay a grid over the moon such that every cell is one arc minute high and one arc minute across, we will know exactly how much space the MST3K logo will take up. La la la. Time to make the grid. Okay. All right, uh, now we have our grid. Don't ever make a grid like this. It's like a thousand dots. Now, 35 across, 35 up and down, should scale to our arc minute moon. So if we can make the MST3K logo fit on here, provided that the letters are five arc minutes high and at least separated by one arc minute, then we should be able to see it on the moon from Earth. So let's, uh, so let's test it. Oh, another montage coming on. Okay, okay, so yes, at standard visual acuity, all of the logo Mystery Science Theater 3000 would fit on the moon and be visible from Earth just like the full moon is. And we'd see the writing on it. It's, it's, it's like a supervillain plan that actually works. How awesome is that? So the logo fits, but remember, we had to use the smallest lettering that human eyesight can pick out just to have it fit on the moon. So if you looked up at the night sky to carry out this tribute, it would look more like this. Not as visible, but still awesome. There is a little bit more space to make these letters larger and therefore easier to see, but even the minimally sized letters would take up an enormous amount of space. In our scaled grid moon, each one of the squares represented 10,000 square kilometers. And we had to fill in 218 squares, which means that it takes up, just for the letters of the logo, over 2 million square kilometers. This amount of surface area would cover a quarter of the United States, just in nerdy letters. But that's just the letters themselves. If you include how tall the letters need to be and how far apart they need to be, it makes a square that is over six million square kilometers. This is it. If you wanted to write your name on the moon or advertise, you would need a billboard this big, something big enough to cover the majority of China. 
The moon does have enough space on it to put letters that standard human vision can recognize, but how would we write on the moon? Well, you could go up to the moon with 59 billion cans of paint. That would do it. Or we could shoot 694,000 of our largest nuclear missiles at the moon and use their craters to write the logo that way. It's arguably a better use of our arsenal. So, could you turn the moon into a giant, tidally locked tribute to Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yeah, you totally could. If you had the means, like painting with nuclear bombs, then the moon is big enough to fit letters that would be recognized by standard human visual acuity. It's something to consider for the not too distant future. Because mystery, science, theater 3000. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram under SciFile to suggest ideas for future episodes and to watch mini episodes of the show. And Saturdays on Science Channel, I'm hosting Mythbusters The Search, where we're looking for the next people to carry on the great legacy of science communication that Mythbusters had. So please tune in. I'll see you there. Kind of. I mean, I won't. But I'll be, you'll be looking at Just watch it. And a big thanks to John Wick Chapter 2 for sponsoring today's episode. J.W. Doe's is the guaranteed to be badass sequel to John Wick, and it will show us what the legendary hitman does when he is forced out of retirement by a former associate plotting to seize control of the shadowy International Assassin's Guild. Since John is bound by a blood oath to help his old pal, he'll travel to Rome, where we'll see him face off against the world's deadliest killers. John Wick Chapter 2 sounds exciting exceedingly cool, and it's out on February 10th. Why did I do it this way? This is 900 dots. Come too far now. Come too far. I'm, st I'm starting to go blind somehow. Hey, do you want to draw a thousand dots? Uh, okay. All right. Uh, now we have our grid. Don't ever make a grid like this. It's like a thousand dots.